Everything in this video is strictly for informational and educational purposes only. I am not a financial advisor and this should not be taken as financial advice. I am merely sharing my own experience and giving my own opinions based on my own personal experience. I cannot guarantee you will make money nor that you will have the same results as me. It is always encouraged for you to do your own research and not simply rely on the information provided in this video. If you have questions, feel free to comment down below and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello mga katropa! Yan guys, so today guys, titignan natin itong bagong NFT game na Monstarior. So guys, itong Monstarior is a blockchain-based game na parang familiar kayo with Splinterlands. It's sort of like that. You collect cards and then you battle using those cards. Kung familiar din kayo sa Yu-Gi-Oh! It's kind of like that. Pero of course, my own mechanics itong si Monstarior. So let's take a look guys what Monstarior is all about. So first of all guys, before we dive in any further, Monstarior is going to have its pre-season sale or its pre-sale in 4 days, 19 hours and 43 minutes from today. So yun guys, yung first round ng Mondrap round 1, ito yung pre-sale, is going to happen October 8. Yun nga yung countdown na binibilang natin. So by October 8 na magsisimula yung round 1 ng Mondrop and then second round is going to be on October 10 and round 3 is October 12. So that's going to be 3 p.m. UTC time. So sa atin sa Pilipinas, that would be around 11 p.m. Okay? So guys, alam naman natin yung advantage ng nakakasali sa pre-sale. You will be able to take advantage of the low prices talaga pagdating sa pre-sale. So if you are interested in this game, these are the important dates that you need to take note of. Ayan. And ito guys, yung mga card packs na will be included in the pre-sale. So Mana Slew Pack is going to be $34 and it will contain 2 Poleras Pack and 1 Salima Pack. Anapur pack is $42 and the pack will contain 1 Poleras pack, 1 Salina pack and 1 Condori pack and the Istoro pack price is $56 and the pack contains 1 Poleras pack, 1 Salima pack and 1 Himachi pack and the Sishima pack price is $89 and the pack contains 1 Poleras pack 1 Himachi Pack, and 1 Everest Pack. So, kung napansin nyo dito, guys, mabababa pa yung presyo kasi nga pre-sale siya. So, anticipated na natin na after the pre-sales, aakit ang presyo ng mga packs na ito. Kaya, if, again, if you're interested, it's always better to buy during pre-sales kasi mas mababa for sure yung presyo dyan. Ayan. So, ito yung backstory ng Monstarier. So, where the story begins, even though the earth is not a heavenly place for bad-natured people, it is too challenging for good people to survive. After spending numerous years on earth, the gods' heralds are fed up with their narrow land and little authority. As greed gets the better of them, the heralds start building strong armies to conquer new territories and become the sole ruler. At first, minor clashes emerge. However, they later turn into devastating conflicts across the world. So, so, you can read the full story here, guys, if you want. So, basically, yun nga, it's, it's basically a battle or a card battle game. And, yan yung pinaka-backstory niya kung bakit tayo nagbabattle. And these are the features of the game. So, all distinctive gaming features revolving around our ecosystem. So, clan. Join a clan and fight for resources with other clans. Actually, guys, this game emphasizes a lot on clans. So, kung mahilig kayo dun sa mga games na talagang clan-based, um, this game is going to be for you. So, if you really like to socialize, this is really a very good game kasi talagang you have to work in clans. Kaya... It's going to be more fun than just, you know, playing alone. Kasi you're going to be interacting with other people through these clans. Ayan. And then may season shine events. Complete collections to win lucrative puzzles. Ayan. Then battle. Fight battle mode to win others' cards. So ito na yung sinasabi ko guys na para talaga siyang Yu-Gi-Oh! and Splinterlands. But of course, the actual gameplay is going to be a little varied. Pero uh, it's kind of like that. It has... Uh, kind of a similar concept but but not entirely like it ayan so transform and upgrade upgrade low value cards to higher valuable cards ayan 
And then, ito yung roadmap nila, guys. So, quarter to 2021, write game plots and build character roots. Story about 25 Monstar Level 1. Finish character sketches. Choose Wax as the first platform to launch project. Develop web game and mobile version. And smart contract. So, ito, tapos na tong part na to, guys. And actually, the game is apparently going to be under the Wax network. And if familiar kayo sa Wax, guys, it means walang babayaran na gas fees. And that's going to be a very big advantage of this game moving forward because a lot of other games that we know, um, may mga gas fees na kailangan binabayaran kapag naglalaro ka. So, Wax Network, guys, wala kang babayaran na gas fees to play. Meron lang staking na mangyayari, which is, uh, I actually will have a video on that one because another game that I'm playing also uses the Wax Network. So, magkakaroon ako ng tutorial dyan kung paano kayo mag-create ng sarili nyong WAX account, paano kayo magpasok ng WAX tokens, and paano gamitin generally yung WAX network with uh, play-to-earn games or NFT games. Ayan. So, yun na nga guys. Having this project or this game under the WAX network is going to be a very big advantage or a very big plus to gamers like us kasi hindi na tayo gagastos for gas fees. Ayan. And then quarter 3 of 2021, guys. Ayan, I think nandito na tayo banda. Airdrop campaign. I think this just finished last September. Then launch web game version. Drop NFTs and trade mon cards level 1 on Atomic Hub. PVP and PVE card game system. And then open source reward contract as proof of prestige. Ayan. And then quarter 4 of 2021, they will upgrade the PVE and PVP gameplay. And then the Android and iOS version will come out. Tournament and Championship. Magkakaroon na niyan. And then, introduce clans and 25 monsters. Clan totally owned by players as a valuable asset. War between clans for resources. And introduce the MOA and staking system. I guess the MOA is going to be their uh, official token, game token. And then, the launch uh, of the Mon Card Level 2. Ayan. And then for quarter 1, 2022, they will upgrade Mon Card Level 3, automatically generate card by AI system, cross use in our game ecosystem, run side chain to serve massive traffic and land with personalization, and system to elect players join the development board. Ayan. So apparently, there's going to be land gameplay in Monstarior and also they will have a system to be able to elect players to join their development team. Ayan. So, kung isa kayo sa mga players ng Monstarior who's going to be with them from the beginning, you have a chance to be part of their development board and you will have a say on how the game will be developed moving forward. Ayan. And then, this is the team of Monstar, guys. Ayan. So, meron naman silang um, real faces behind the names. Ayan. So, Jiang Tran is the project manager. Thoa Pham is head of communications. Lok Lam is chief technology officer. Fu Yun, chief gaming officer. And art manager is Tan Bin. Ayan. So, very young people heading this game. Okay, so let's take a look at their white paper, guys. Okay, so they call their white paper Mon Paper. Ayan. So about Monstario, Monstario is a blockchain game. Players must collect a certain number of NFTs or non-fungible tokens in order to win prizes previously locked to smart contract. The heart of Monstario, however, is clans in which players endeavor together for the greater good in Monstario. Pla play... Players can perform as a team to complete missions and win prizes, or they can contribute resources in the form of stakes to attack other clans. Ayan. So if you're familiar with games na is clan-centered, guys, or talagang you attack in clans, Monstario is really concentrated on that, which is actually interesting because most of the NFT games that are out right now mostly concentrates on solo gameplay. So, itong Monstario apparently, talagang ang focus niya is on clans. So, it's this really is going to be a group gameplay. And it's so very important for you to work as a group 
and for you to to play with other people, socialize, ganyan. So, I think in its own right, this is very interesting and something that may be successful kasi, you know, as as humans, we are sociable by nature. So, having this kind of gameplay, which is not yet present in other NFT games, might actually be fun in terms of gaming. So, this will be very interesting for us to see how successful this focus on clans that Monstire is going to be doing. Ayan. So, our mission, Monstire Development Team empowers players to create clans with multiple levels that are tailored to their specific ambition and vision. Each clan will have its own characteristics and will compete for prosperity in order to attract the most compatible players for their strategy. Season. So, the Monstire Development Team is continually looking for ways to make the most of players' experiences. For this reason, we designed three seasons. Each season will have its own level of difficulty, ranging from accelerating to difficult. Through each season, Monstire will have functional upgrades for clans. Also, we pay attention to improve PvE, PvP matches in the way that's more intense. Now, it's not so simple as Monstire expects players to grow their own strategy. Monstire requires players to employ highly complex tactics in order to defeat their opponent yeah so if you're familiar now with Yu-Gi-Oh it's really card play it's really very strategic you know how you play your cards is really going to determine how how you win so it's not necessarily so it's not necessarily na mas malakas yung yung card ni, nito eh, automatically panala na siya so that's the good thing about this it's strategy is going to really play a big part in how you play the game. Apart from, of course, getting good cards, you have to have certain skills. You have to have strategy. Kasi kahit na maganda yung cards mo, kung hindi naman maayos yung strategy mo, you're not going to win. Ayan. So, this is the roadmap. Basically, we looked at this a while ago already. And then, ito yung features. So, in Monstire, there are four main types of cards in circulation. So, um, black card. So, black cards are cards distributed to players as part of the airdrop campaign. Players can participate in Monstire with these black cards to convert them into official cards or mon card. So, si mon card naman, guys, is regarded as an official card. So, each card represents one of the 25 main cards characters and then the hero card is an abbreviation for herald card then there are also function cards so energy cards and transformation cards are examples of function cards and so seasons and rewards the contract will compromise some tempting bonuses to receive the prize the player should first collect enough nft cards that were previously set up with the contract and send them to the contract the player must collect any 25 mon cards to get the big payoff in the first season in addition to to keep things interesting, we have small prizes for players who collect all 3 to 5 cards from a hidden collection that we will reveal after the release. Ayan. So, um, if you're a little worried guys, kunwari low budget lang kayo or konti lang yung cards na kaya yung bilhin. Remember guys, that when playing this game, you can win cards from your opponents or you can win cards by playing. So, it's not necessarily naman kung maliit lang yung budget mo hindi naman ibig sabihin nun ay hindi ka na pwedeng in the running for this game again, it's really going to boil down to strategy kapag magaling ka, may chance ka okay? kasi the way for you to win prizes is if you collect cards especially if you collect 3 to 5 cards from the hidden collection daw, ayan so again, even if low budget ka lang or konti lang yung cards mo eventually you can rack up cards by playing, ayan so, battle. In battle, Monstar has two modes, PvP and PvE. So, in PvP, which is player versus player, it's a one-on-one -on -one battle between the two players. When a player requests to join a battle, the system will find an opponent and assemble the battle for them. To engage in the battle, the player must join a particular clan by possessing at least five random cards. When entering the battle, each side must be a member of two different clans and will select 10 cards to play. The cards cope with damage, defend, and heal, and they cost mana to activate. Players bet on which and how many cards they will win or lose out of a deck of 10. There is no limit to the number of cards that can be bet on. Two players can place bets on a different number of cards. The player will have 2-4 to four energy and 4 random cards each turn. The player uses energy to activate cards and wins by making your opponent run out of health. 
When they win, they double the number of cards they bet before the battle. When they lose the battle, they lose the bet cards. Each card will take part in 5 PvP battles. Following that, it must load one energy card. Ayan. So, this part guys explains how the PvP works. So, kung familiar kayo or familiar sa inyo yung mechanics, sabi ko nga, it's a lot like Yu-Gi-Oh! Even how you play the cards, how you play de the decks, and even how you bet. So, it's a lot similar to Yu-Gi-Oh! talaga. So, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, kahit naman magsimula lang kayo sa minimum amount of cards na required, okay lang yon, Kasi, you have a chance to win cards by betting here nga sa PvP. Ayan. So, PvE or player versus environment, ito yung adventure mode, guys. It's a battle between player versus the computer. So, players need 4 cards and every 6 hours to participate in a PvE battle. Players must join clans to compete in PvE, PvE rewards, and compass function cards, Monstar official cards, and other items. Each side brings 4 cards to the battle. The cards cope with damage, defend and heal, and they cost mana to activate. Each turn, the player will have 4 energy to activate the cards. The battle will end when the health of either side reaches 0. A card can participate in 40 PvE battles. Following that, it needs to load 1 energy card before it can participate in the next competition. This is a form of claim for play-to-earn players. Ayan. So this part guys explains how the PvE or adventure works. So it's pretty much like PvP then except that ang kalaban mo is the computer and lesser yung requirements for you to do the match. Ayan. Then transform and upgrade. Players can combine low value cards to gain access to higher value cards. The first season of Monstire will include 25 Monstire cards as well as the other heralds. These 25 Monstire cards each have a unique function and power. Ayan. So, apparently, you can transform and upgrade a card by combining low value cards para magkaroon ka ng higher value cards. And again, sabi ko nga, so kahit na you have the minimum amount, kung magaling kang dinamiskate, you can win cards by playing. Ayan. And then, four clans. First phase. Only those with the Herald card can own clans in Monstarius first phase. Heralds can invite players to join their clans in order to benefit from the owner's incentives. Clans require players to pay a joining fee as a commitment to work together to accomplish common goals. A player can only participate in PvP and PvE battles after joining a clan. The Herald can choose the best players for themselves in order to sustain the most legitimate armies and tactics in ways to combat other clans. Furthermore, players can stake cards to clans in order to receive a dividend. The Herald will lend this card to other players so they can engage in battles. Second phase. In Monstar's second phase, players can establish and lead their own community groups to form their own clans. A player can become a Herald and own clans by unlocking a hidden function one by one with conditions. Ayan. Now, this part, guys, explains the transparency of their contract. So, the funds are linked to the contract and are available for anyone to inspect. As this contract is unlinked, no one can alter its data. Only when a player collects the required number of cards and sends them to the contract, does the locked amount become available. Okay, and then membership guys, Monstar created our verification standards and missions for players to complete in order to join the community with the goal of creating a genuine community of players and minimizing the participation of bots or players using multiple accounts. Players must accept the community regulations we created in addition to having a Discord account that has been active for a sufficient period of time before joining. So there are two types of memberships in Monstarier, guys, Diamonds and White Mons. So Diamonds, this is a title for those who have been involved with Monstarier from the initial stage. You must verify their authenticity and contribution to Monstarier by completing missions, creating communities, and actively engaging in our community. The reward is the privilege to participate in Dia Drop. We will identify and count those who are eligible to become diamonds before the launch of NFTs. They need to be at the highest level in terms of mission completion. Before each sale of NFTs, diamonds must confirm their active status, otherwise they will be replaced by the next person in line. We expect to choose 600 diamonds to escort us during the NFT sale. Wow, so um, these are the memberships that you can get 
simply just by being active in their social media and being there from the beginning and also participating in missions and actively engaging in the community. And the other type of membership is White Mons. These are players who have completed missions and have been authenticated prior to each release. Ayan. So this is the NFT card sale, guys. It says here, the first NFT sale season happened last September 2021. But uh, as we discussed earlier, the pre-sale is going to happen this October 8, 2021. So you still have time, guys, to join that one. So this is their team. Uh, we already showed this a while ago. But basically, Monstar developed by the NEIK Labs, a research team of blockchain enthusiasts at the Vietnam National University of Ho Chi Minh City. Ayan. So, yeah, so these are the people uh, involved in Monstarier team. And they all have their LinkedIn accounts. Ayan. So, you can go ahead and check them. But basically, they're doxxed. And then this is the operation team. Ayan. So, all of them have their names and pictures also. Although the operations team do not have their LinkedIn accounts here. But the development team all have their LinkedIn accounts included. Ayan. So basically, yeah, um, the team is doxxed. So that's always a good thing. And also, they have their social media accounts, guys. So completo naman sila. They have a Discord, Facebook, Medium, Telegram, and Twitter. And their website actually looks pretty good, no? It's, it looks uh, really nice. And then, of course, when you press play, coming soon pa lang nakalagay kasi hindi pa available or ready to play yung game. So yeah, uh, looking at their website, all is good naman. Also, all their social media accounts are listed. And I checked all of their social media accounts. Lahat naman ng social media accounts nila is accessible. And also, uh, one of the most important things na dapat tinitignan nyo is kung doxed ang developers, which they are. So, real names, real faces, real people. Ayan. And they also have an official trailer or teaser that they So not much has been released apart from that guys. I would have liked kung meron ng kind of a preview of the gameplay itself. I think that's something that's really going to get people excited for the game. But I went to all their social media accounts and there's actually some excitement from the followers. No? They're, they're really looking forward to this project. And a lot of them think na because nga this is going to be under the WAX network, na it's going to be really easier to play because nga walang magiging gas fees, walang magiging extra gastos kumbaga para, para lang malaro nila yung game. Ayan. So, their social media accounts, hindi pa ganun ka laki. Uh, even their Discord, I checked, medyo wala pa masyadong activity or wala masyadong tao pa but but all their social media accounts are up ayan so i think guys this game is is interesting there are a lot of things that can be improved of course uh, especially yung especially yung preview nila for the game because i think one of the reasons why their community isn't as big as it should be it's because wala pa sila masyadong previews for the game. But so far, ayun na nga, if, if I am understanding it correctly, it's going to be a lot like Yu-Gi-Oh! and Splinterlands. And if makasali kayo dito sa pre-season or sa pre-sale, of course, you can expect to get the best prices. Because we all know guys na basta pre-sale, mas mura dyan. And so, if you are interested in this game, guys, ayun, remember these dates, October 8, October 10, and October 12. That's going to be the round 1, round 2, and round 3 of their Mon Drop or their pre-sale. Ayan. So, right now, guys, there's not much that we still know about Monstarior. Pero, if it's going to be a lot like Splinterlands, and we all know how Splinterland was in the beginning, talagang malaki yung uh, rewards or gains na nakuha dun sa Splinterlands nung umpisa, no? So, we don't know yet what's going to be the exact earnings that we're going to get on Monstarior. But if it's anything like Splinterlands, it's going to be a plus-plus gain. Ibig sabihin, more than the amount that you put in. Kasi ganun yung nangyari sa Splinterlands nung umpisa. Ang laki ng naging gains. Parang iba nag 
times 500% pa ata, if I'm not mistaken. Ayan. So, sabi ko nga, right now, we have no idea how it's going to be for Monstar Year. So, all that you can do if you like games like this is try it out. And the best way to try it out is during the pre-sale para makamura kayo. Ayan. So, that's it for today's video, guys. Please make sure to like this video. Click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell para updated kayo sa mga bago naming uploads. And if you have any suggestions or you have an NFT game in mind that you want me to review, feel free to drop them down in the comment section below. So before we end this video guys, I'd just like to remind you that this is merely a video review based on my own personal experience and that I'm not telling or compelling anyone to invest or to follow in my footsteps. This video aims to inform and educate as well as encourage you all to always do your own due diligence when it comes to money investments. Remember guys that NFT and blockchain is the future. We cannot escape it so we might as well embrace it with an open mind while still remaining vigilant. Let's not waste the potential of crypto. So guys, if we find great opportunities, it is only wise to seize them. But at the same time, I encourage you to always do your own research first because knowledge is power. So thank you very much for watching guys. Until next video. Bye-bye.